I hope to show in this video a little more about the orbs that I have been capturing in pictures. Now, this is an orb, but you don't see the entire orb, just I went up pretty far into it. And this is in real time, you know, it's a movie. So what is transpiring in the orb is, well, you'll just have to look at it and I don't know what it is, but there's little bubbles that come up, little round circles, and there's all kinds of activity and it pulsates. Now sometimes I do take the uh, focus and go up and go out, back in and back and forth just a little bit, but not as much as this pulsing is. And the movement inside the orbs are a bit jerky because everything in there is flickering. Now, some people would think this is lens flare. I want to show you right now. Let me take this down. I'll come back to it. But I looked up images of lens flare. And I do see this often in my viewing of uh, pictures that I take because I'm always taking pictures into the light and I've seen this sort of thing but this is it's some examples of lens flare I just wanted you to see because I want you to see the stills of the orbs that I take and you'll recognize that they don't exactly look like this and lens flare is a real thing it's the camera sometimes they make a little thing like this one right here. I'll show you this one. I'll see if I can get it bigger. Uh, it's not cooperating. But there is such a thing as lens flare and some of it looks a little bit like some of what I get. Like this one's for this one right here for instance. It looks a little bit like that. I'll just go through some of these showing you their examples of lens flare. I've seen a lot of people who are looking at lens flare when they are talking about the film that they've taken and I know what they're seeing is lens flare because I've learned to recognize it in my own pictures. I used to play around with the little nipple-like thing that my camera makes when you shoot into the sun. It's sort of like this one right here. It makes a little thing. This right here is showing some orbs though. I, I don't know if that's lens flare. But now I will get you back to this one which is still going. It goes for about 30 minutes. And in this I'm going right now I'm taking the focus back to where it's normal vision and you can see it's just some marbles. And there's a lead light behind me behind the marbles and I take the camera and I focus up real close on the shiny parts that shine off of the marbles. So all this activity that you see is from the shine that shines forth from the marbles and the kind of marbles, well the kind of glass, if it's a marble you usually are going to get a round orb but if it's something of a different shape than a marble and it's made of glass, you're going to get the light will travel through the glass and you'll see very many ways, which I will be showing you here in a minute, that it looks when it's trapped in the glass tra trying to go through it and it turns and twists in some most astonishing ways. But I just wanted you to see this one that's done as a video so you see how it looks, how the colors are always changing. As a matter of fact, when I <clears throat> when I take the uh, snapshot of the still, after I see a certain color I like real well, before I can even snap snap this picture, it has changed. These colors are changing all the time. Now, I'm going to stop this one. I'll Maybe I'll go up a little further in it. Mm, it's not letting me. 
I'll keep it running and come back to it. Because I wanted to show you some of my still pictures that are not lens flare and they're not debris caught in my camera. Now some of the things that possibly into these orbs are a little bit of debris because like this thing right here that I'm pointing to and this other thing and quite a few little things that are unusual looking to say the least. Well, they will appear in the same place on the picture, so I know that's something in my camera. But the odd thing is that those things like that look like some of the things that are in the orbs that only show up sometimes. And the colors, I'll put this on zoom, pan and zoom, the colors in the orbs are just fantastic. Let me see if I'm getting that as good as I can. Now, with the naked eye, I see light stretched out like a thin veil. And it's like it has little rips and tears in it in places, sort of like what you see right here in this picture. And the, and the orbs of light, you can tell this is the orb turned and twisted and rolling up here at the end because you see the little concentric telltale lines that it's the edge of the orb. And here over here is the other edge. And then here's one coming in. And uh, sometimes they look like this. They get all jumbled up, intermingled. And then they look just weird. And they ribbon out sometimes, and then parts of the ribbon fan out like a skirt. Sometimes they, I get into the orb in a real close-up range, and I get fantastic colors in parts of the orb. But this is light, and it's always moving. And I've learned something from listening to some videos out there about light, that light has no mass. And yet I'm seeing this. I know it's light because I'm filming the light and the reflection of the light off, the, off of the uh, object of glass. And what I notice is that it's in the space it, that the the beams of light come forth from my light source. And as I move around in it, I get all kinds of uh, different orbs. And uh, I know that this is not debris. It's light in motion. And light is orb-like. And you can put your hand right where this is. I'm. I take most of the pictures right in front of my computer. Uh, I, I back up a little from my desk with my light on and I then I take snap most of all these pictures. Sometimes I do outside ones. But sometimes I get the very very simplest ones that before they get a lot of color in them. And I can see the light moves orb light from one spot to another. And with my camera or with my eyes just viewing this, I can see this move into this this orb or fold up into a rolled up orb up here. And lately, I take pictures that are I'm just going for unusual and very colorful and pretty. And... Uh, I don't know what any of this that I see inside the orb is. And your guess probably is as good as mine. Unless you're going to tell me that it's lens flare, because I'm pretty sure it isn't. Although, some of these pictures do have a little lens flare, and when I come to one, maybe I'll see it and point it out to you. Now, there's one particular glass object that I filmed that at a certain angle, the light going through it looks like a clam. It uh, looks like something with an opening and an outer shell. And the light just does extraordinary things in that. And I see light as these orbs funnel around making a vortex. 
and all this that you see in the orb that is whitish and kind of staticky looking that's in light when I see fabric of light when I even just with a naked eye I can see the light making a fabric that makes beautiful folds and drapes itself all kinds of ways but with the camera I get more color now this this I took a with when I was outside of the, of the sun with a marble, you know, making the orbs. So the sun is so bright, much more so than my little LED light that I have in my room. So I got a real red one, and there's another one. The light, the way it travels is, is amazing. It zigzags, it turns on a dime. It turns 90 degree angles. Uh, 180 degree angles it just can do so many things and that's still of the Sun now when I'm looking at orbs they're moving and you can see this one how it moves and it just stretches along it's like a it's like a living entity really and you never know how it's going to arrange itself I thought this one was very beautiful I know that people who study uh, such things as the light and uh, electromagnetism and that sort of thing might write this off and say, well, this is just something similar to lens flare or some other other thing about an, an anomaly in the uh, glass or something that I'm using. But I really don't think it's that. And if they would look at my pictures, they would determined that it couldn't be that. I really like the way this one turned out. It looks like a flower. There it is again in that way. And see, I can't go back and do this same picture again because every time I take the, the film, it makes something that it never makes again exactly the same way. I might make something a little similar. Like I get this one right here of the light as it comes from the source. I can get this picture a lot, but it won't be exactly like another picture of it. But I can get similar to this pictures of orbs coming from the light and they come and they start folding and gathering colors. Some of them have colors as they come out of the light. Here's one that's coming, it's kind of a teardrop shaped. When it comes from the light source, right close to the light source, it will be pretty much a teardrop shape like this one. And there's a light source up here in the right hand corner of high. But then when it gets down past the teardrop stage, it makes a more round, like this green and red looking thing you see there. But you, you really can never know how it's going to look because I'm constantly finding new ways for it to look. That thrills me to find one. Sometimes like, oh, I've never gotten light doing that before. Now, I'm gonna exit out of this and see where I am before it's all gone in that movie. Because I wanted to show you the little bubbles See the little white bubble there? And th there'll be others. It's like it's boiling. These bubbles just come to the surface and linger around for a little while. I don't know what they are, but to me, this is a living thing. A pulsating, breathing, living something or another that takes no space. It's in empty space which is not really empty. We just think of it as empty space because we can't normally see it, which I think I've discovered a way of seeing it, a very simple way. And I'm not going to write it off as lens flare or something that's, that's ordinary because I've seen too much in this light now for, to convince myself that it's anything other than what I believe it to be which is a living consciousness. 
that has, it carries with, this light carries with it little light entities. I'll be showing you one of them. But first, let, I'll let you look at this a little longer. It seems that nature, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, consciousness, creates with circles, circles within circles within circles. And you see a lot of darkness that moves into the orbs, but it doesn't be, it seem to be in conflict with the light. Sometimes it's absorbed by the light. And sometimes the darkness gives the light more dramatic colors. It's like I had the finest microscope in the world that is showing me a view of something so tiny that it's not even, maybe it's not tiny, maybe it's just not in this 3D dimension. Because you don't look in your room. I mean, I, take, I took this picture of all this right in front of my computer with the light on and I was kind of back from the light with a marble, a big glass marble. And I took all of these, well, it was several marbles, I'll show you. I think it was this that I used. And um, it's just amazing to see all that activity in there. And all the color, the colors are beautiful. Okay, now I'm gonna take you out of there and back to Picasso where I will start playing some of these pictures. So you see the still pictures of this as they go by. I have so many, maybe a couple or 3,000 pictures of all these orbs. Don't know what I'll ever do with them, but some of them are very, very beautiful. That would make a good mural or a big picture for the for the uh, wall. And when you're taking pictures of orbs, they can be any color. And the very next one you see will be maybe an, another color altogether. And the lines of movement that they do are amazing. Sometimes they look like they have black holes in them. What I like about orbs is that they seem to be so agreeable with other orbs. I mean, they cut right through another orb or they give birth to another orb from their own body. So when you see one orb, it could turn into many orbs because any streak of light within the orb can come out from it and make another orb. See, that one looks like it has a hole in it. I'm going to exit out of here and take you to, because I'm using up a lot of my time. I want to take you to some specific ones that I just took the other day. Well, let me show you this first. This shows the movement of the orb, how orb-like it stretches itself. And it can stretch itself and just make one uh, oblong little blob like that one in the middle or it can go very long and ribbon itself out and just twist and turn all kinds of ways. And see, there I captured many orbs of light and they all have different patterns in them. Some are similar, but you know, some are quite different. And they always have, all. I've, I've noticed this little ring that I'm pointing to right here. There, very often, I see that ring in a lot of my orbs. I have two different cameras I take pictures with. 
See, there's that ring again. And my new camera gets a different kind of picture than my older camera gets. Oh, these are from my new camera, which I'm showing you now, but I will be showing you some from my older camera and how unusual they are. Now see this one, a whole lot of, it looked like gel-like stuff, but dark with a little color in it, just enveloped most of this orb right here. And look at, oh, I thought I had another one of it. Let me see. Nope, I didn't. I do have other pictures of this sort of thing happening to an orb. Now these are the teardrop shapes as they come from the light. They're pretty much that shape until they get out a little further. Here's one where that that little bunch of uh, darker colored light with smaller little threads of light in it starts uh, taking over this orb. And there it got really big, almost swallowed up the whole thing. Sometimes I get some that have, have what looks like little bones. <laughs> to me, it reminds me of bones. Now, the orb-like, the uh, teardrop-shaped orbs that come from the light have this color-coded kind of thread-looking things like this in it. I'll, sh I'll be showing you more. There's another one. And uh, then that takes a different shape. See, this just has a little of the color coding as it comes out of the light. And then a little more, and a little more. But then when it gets out a little further from the light, it turns into a round orb. Pretty, pretty much a perfect circle orb. But orbs don't have to stay in a perfect circle. And they pretty much do whatever they want to do. I'm just showing you some of the many different variations the colors take inside the orb. And sometimes I'll do like this. I'll go up so you don't even see the outside edges because some of the inside is so pretty, I, I wanted to get it up close. All these that you see, if they were in a movie like this, the movie I was showing you, which I'm gonna go back to and see if there's any more of that that we wanna look at. All of that would be moving. It's just that I've got still pictures, so I get one little still snapshot. And uh, that doesn't give you the idea of how very active these are, as you can see with this. Colors are moving in it all the time, and the little white rings are coming to the surface. And it's like you're looking through many layers of something looks kind of watery sometimes to me, and then sometimes it looks a little fiery. It gives a lot of effects of look, although it's taking up no space as far as the physical world is concerned. You can put your hand right where this is. This sort of thing is in the light all around us, invisibly. We don't see it. And from the metaphysical literature I've read, that that makes up 
what is called empty space, or some people call it dark matter, dark energy, or something like that. It is more real than the matter, and it is from this that the matter is derived. What is invisible is more real than what we see with our physical eyes, in other words. Because when you're not in the physical world, and you're more in spirit, everything is ideal. And ideal we think of as, oh, that's just a thought in the mind. Yeah, well, that thought in the mind is something. It's very important something. Because the thoughts in our minds are creating our reality. And so we need to pay attention to what seems to be empty space, seems to be invisible. But now, thanks to this technique of filming it, I think, in part, I've made it visible, some of it. I don't know what portion of it is that I'm seeing. Sometimes I think that I'm seeing the uh, nucleus of the atom because in metaphysical literature, the Ascended Masters say that the nucleus of the atom is an electronic fireball. <laughs> and see, I'm pulling back to show you that it's the marbles, those that I showed you, and how I clo go close in. And you can try this if you have a little digital camera and a bright light, like a, like a lead light or a flashlight even. But you have to be in a room that's a little bit dark because when you take these, like I take a lot of them outdoors and it's really hard to see the viewer on my camera because the light is so bright. And because the light is so bright, the orbs I get are usually not as colorful. There's just a little too much light. <laughs> but in that light, with the naked eye, I can see little squiggly things all in the air, in the uh, surrounding me, like a bubble around me. And if I turn, they turn with me. They stay in a certain position in front of me. And I know that sounds really weird. And I didn't think anyone would believe me. But now that I can take pictures of somewhat of what I see, then I'll have to get out of here. Then I'm not afraid to tell you that I saw that. <laughs> I shouldn't be afraid anyway. Back to those lens flares. You see, they look nothing like the pictures that I've been showing you in, in my uh, picture album. The orb is so flexible, it can twist right in the middle and it can fold or it can scroll up and it, when it scrolls up real tight, it looks like a beam of light. But it moves kind of worm-like, like this. It, it'll have a head like I'm pointing to here, that it's moving in that direction. And sometimes it goes around and the tail of it will meet the mouth of it and it will go into its own self. Light is one remarkable subject. Someone that was looking at some of my videos said, that's just light. Like, that's no big deal, it's just light. But I, I was thinking, well, just light. What a vast subject to say just to, <laughs> like it were a simple matter. According to how I believe, we are made out of light and that everything that is, is made out of light. And our quantum physicists, physicists are coming to that conclusion that everything is light. And some of them are beginning to see that we're all one. Okay, let me go back to this picture. One day, out of the light, that's usually threaded with really colorful little things like you've seen. That day, see this thing right here? This little thing started showing up, a little ring. 
and there's another view of it. And that day, and only that day, did I see the rings coming in straight from the light. And I thought, what is this? And see this one right here, it has another little ring right above it that just seems to be like a satellite to the, this one, <laughs> like a moon or something. And then the little ring now shows up in, here it is too, again. And there's a little satellite thing above it. And it looks like it's little lumps of stuff. And it's got an outer ring around it, like most of the things here have concentric rings around them. They're not necessarily round, but they'll be a outline of whatever it is. Now see, here's the ring showed up and showed itself up right here in a moving one. As it was moving, the ring was moving right along with it. And sometimes I get a picture like this where it just looks so graceful the way the light bends and folds and ribbons itself out. Like I say, it doesn't stay round and it doesn't stay by itself. It joins with other light orbs. And together they do some pretty fantastic things, <clears throat> like making colors like this. See, there's one with the ring in it, too. And like, what is that? It, it, it's got the little satellite thing above it, too, right there. It's not easy to see, but maybe you can see it. It's, I'm circling it. But that little ring that came, came in is curious. I'm curious about what it is because I see it in other orbs. And uh, it's like, uh, it's a wonderment, but everything about this is a wonderment. But that's something that I didn't see for a long time, and then all at once I saw it coming in, and now I see it embedded in some of the bigger orbs. Now look at that one. This orb is moving, and it decided right there to shape itself like a little slicing knife or something and go right into another orb. They get along real well, these orbs, with one another. And together they can create some pretty fantastic colors. I'm going to get a big picture made of one of these. But my biggest problem is I have so many that are so beautiful that I don't know which one yet. Now this orb was taken with my older camera which shows you a lot of the circles. Little tiny circles you see and bigger circles and circles that have the dark ring around in the, in the middle of it. But this is my old camera which has these artifacts that show up in the picture in the same place so I think they're part of the camera, they've embedded in the camera. And their number has grown. Used to, when I first started out taking pictures with this camera of light, I only had this one that I'm pointing to right now. And it looks like some of the stuff that I see in orbs, the little rings and light colors around what looks like little pebbles, so I call them a pea pod. Looks like peas in a pod. But then, Later on, I got a bigger pea pod right up here and a few other little things. This is one of them that I'm pointing to right now. This little thing's showing up in all my pictures. But I was look at, looking at some of my older pictures from this camera and there are some, some of these kind of artifacts that I used to have that I don't have anymore. So if it's stuff in my camera that's just stuck there, it changes and it grows. <laughs> but it doesn't change where it is the real, real fast. 
see how this orb is moving and as it moves it just gets narrow and gets all kinds of shapes to it this is pretty well here's a good example this one is moving and as it's moving it's rounding itself up like a scroll and here where it, where you see it now it's more straightened out and sometimes when it's doing all this it's carrying a lot of color like in this one and this one and they just look all kinds of shapes and there's one, some that are traveling and they they look unusual sometimes the orbs I get have holes in them and I'll go through these rather fast because I've already at 35 minutes but see now this one a lot of them at this stage are they're just full of color-coded uh, threads but this one only had one streak of it I thought that was unusual and dark spots will be in them and colorful areas will be in them things that you can't figure out what in the world could that be but it's nothing that we would be familiar with even in our microscopic uh, world of looking at amoeba and things like that they don't look quite like this they always seem to be moving under their own speed eating other things as they move around them sometimes the colors get pretty wild and I just snap 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 one picture after another because I love color I'm looking at these like an artist would. I was listening to them talk about the Higgs boson the other day. I even made a video about that and my thoughts on it. And they had uh, they had a about 600 people that were scientists at the uh, CERN where they had the Haldron Collider who are working on the problem of symmetry because you see symmetry is problematic in their math mathematical deductions because perfect symmetry a lot of their equations depend on there being perfect symmetry for it to work out mathematically whatever it is they're trying to work out which don't ask me that because that is what goes beyond my understanding but as they were telling it they were it was like they were saying if everything was in perfect symmetry it would cancel itself out and there would be nothing no you no me no world and I thought well I've read about that Walter Russell talks about that he calls it the negative principle and talks about how nature never lets itself get caught in zero balance why because it would cancel itself out and we would have no you no me no mountains rivers valleys <laughs> wouldn't have anything if everything were a perfect zero balance but we'd probably be in the world of ideal instead of the physical world were we to reach as a person were we to reach that zero balance but don't worry that you're just going to disappear I think getting to that point is very hard to do and what is beyond that point I would imagine would be better than physical life it would be more inclusive of other kinds of life because consciousness is so big the thought of, of the physical being all there is is laughable because it's only a portion of consciousness we have no idea what other things there are to explore in other realms well exit and see where I am back to library I want to go down toward the end okay I'm gonna start right about here I have a friend in the light and I've given him a name because I see him so often he just keeps popping up 
and he only shows up when I'm using my older camera. But I don't think he's a piece of debris, and this is him, and you'll see him in a lot of the pictures that are going to go by now, because every time I see him, I take his picture. That's the little ring thing, and this is the spectrum of light that Harry, the little light creature I just spoke of, shows up in. I'm going to go rather fast. There's Harry again. Now, I and there's the little ring. You can see it faintly there. Sometimes when I'm using that camera, and that's kind of hairy right there, he, he's not very clear there. But when I'm using that camera, I say, where are you, Harry? <laughs> this is the only communication I have with him. I say, will you show up? And then a lot of times he will. But sometimes I have to search and search before I see the little feller. I don't know that he's a feller. He could be a gal or a neither male nor female, but he is an individual personality, I think, and a strange looking thing. A lot of the ones going by now, I feature Harry in it because I've taken his picture so often. There he is again, just a blur. I'm going rather fast because I'm already at 41 minutes. There's Harry again in that one. I talked to him like he was a real little living entity. But other than that he shows up sometimes, um, I don't get any other kind of communication like, what's your world like? I would like to know that, but we don't communicate like that. Every now and then, I get big black circles of dark, like a black hole, and this one was very prominent. There's Harry again, and again, and you can see the ring, I, I don't know if you can see it, maybe you can, it, I'll trace around the edges of it. That is that same ring that I saw coming in. The same look, looking kind of ring, because there were several that came in that day. More than one. I do believe, there's Harry again, I believe that the light is bringing in some things and powers and abilities and scenes that will be, a, oops, I didn't, know, didn't mean to put a star on that. There's the ring again. I think it's bringing in stuff that is evolving us. And maybe we need to, to evolve because our world's getting kind of scary. It's kind of getting to be a scary place out there. And here's that ring. You can sort of see it, but sometimes the colors of the orb are so, so such that it kind of dims something. But I think I even see the little floating one that's right there that floats above the ring. And there it is, right there, kind of on its side. There's Harry, again and again. <laughs> and I'll say thanks to Harry, like, oh, Harry, the ring came to your world, your little spectrum world. Because when I get Harry in the pictures, I get other things along with him. There's Harry again. And... I'll show you some of them. And I, when I see some of the things that hang out in his spectrum of light, I, I know I'll be seeing him. There's that ring. This thing right here. I'm always getting that. When, I'm, when I see that, I know that it, seconds later I will see Harry because that always precedes him. It is a strange and mysterious world. 
there's that little thing again. That it looks like two things that are trying to merge together. Everything consists of little squiggly lines or tubes that are only partially there. You don't see a whole long stretch of it. And see, this is made up of little, uh, they call it, by, uh, when they're talking about plasma, they call this kind of uh, long lengths like that to be fragmentation, or I wrote it down and I lost my paper where I wrote the word they use for that. Filamentation, fibrous looking, stringy things that are in outer space of all places, but right in our own rooms as well. And that's another thing metaphysics has taught me, that if you look for answers in the little things, you'll find the same laws that apply to the little things apply to the big things. So if we can't go out into space, we can look into inner space, as I think I'm doing, and it will tell us something that may be pertinent to what's out there. I know I look at some of those Hubble spacecraft pictures of the uh, different nebulas, and they are very colorful indeed. And there's a lot of that stringiness to them. Okay, well, I think I've just about gone through all my pictures that I had for you. And uh, let me see. Next it out of here. Okay, that one finished. So, this is the Dove Lady. I'm hoping that you will spread this video around. Perhaps get it to some quantum physicist. I've tried. I've sent videos to them, but I, I don't hear any reply. And then that makes me think, well, maybe what I'm seeing is really not all that amazing to them. And I can't has, I can hardly help but think, why shouldn't it be? Because I look around on different um, images on Google images, images of light, images of dark energy, and everything is mostly a drawing. Somebody's drawn what they think it looks like. But I, I don't see any orbs with creatures in them like I captured here. I don't see any of this kind of thing. Now, this doesn't look like all of this is lens flare or dirt in my camera or whatever. It's a mysterious world of, of the subatomic world, I would call it. It's of that. Someone took a picture of something in the sky that looked just like this. It was in the clouds. It had this kind of a effect. I have that picture somewhere. But I've got to end this now. This is the Dove Lady over and out.